As you enter a building, have a thought about other people, how they may enter the building, if they have problems with sight or with mobility, how will they get in safely and easily. Steps, ramps and handrails are very important features. Stairs and balustrades explainer, as per the National Building Code. We'll be discussing the stairs, how they are made, and what is the regulations regarding their design. Here you can see a 300 by 150 millimeter high step. The minimum width is 1,500 millimeters. The maximum number of steps in one flight is 12. At the 12th step, there needs to be a resting area of 1,500 millimeters. Example of non-compliant steps. 20 steps without resting point and missing handrail. On each flight of stairs there needs to be a handrail. The handrails should be placed on both sides. The handrails should continue 300 millimeters beyond both ends of this flight of stairs. The maximum height of a handrail should be 900 millimeters and the secondary rail at 600. Example, dangerous, no handrails. Example, dangerous, open on one side, no handrail. At both ends of the flight of stairs, 300 millimeters from the first step and the last step, there needs to be a tactile ground surface indicator. This is for blind people to know when the beginning and the end of steps are. If there's a flight of stairs with a resting area and continuous handrails, there does not need to be any TGSI on the landing. Here is a quick recap. There should be no more than 12 steps in a flight of stairs. The dimensions of each step should be a maximum of 150 millimeters tall. The tread depth should be at least 300 millimeters, and the width of the whole step should not be less than 1,500 millimeters. Examples of dangerous non-compliant steps. The following stair designs are disallowed by law. Open steps such as those found on most metal and spiral staircases. These save the builder profitable carpet space on each floor, but cause considerable danger to all. Open steps that you can see here are a real danger to anybody who are semi-ambulatory because the foot can get stuck and caught underneath the sharp front edge of any step. Example, dangerous. Steps are too high and open tread. There are more than 12 in this flight. Turning steps such as those found on most metal and spiral staircases. These save the builder profitable carpet space on each floor but cause considerable danger to all. Here you can see that the person coming down the stairs has nowhere to hold on to and they have a very narrow step at the same time. The person on the outside has the benefit of a wider step and the handrail. You can see how dangerous this is. An example of turning steps. These winders on the spiral staircase are open tread. Kite steps on stairway corners. These are triangular steps designed to make a narrower stairwell without landings. Again it saves the builder profitable carpet space on each floor but causes danger and inconvenience to all. Here you can see, like the spiral staircase, the narrow side of the step is very dangerous as the foot cannot cover the whole step. As the steps are quite narrow, the chance of missing the following step is quite high, as you can see in this visual. Here the person is stepping down with the right foot, and it's quite possible that they will miss the following step altogether, or their heel will catch on the edge. You can imagine how difficult this is for somebody who's normally abled, but for somebody who's disabled or using some walking assistive device, this can be extremely dangerous. Example, dangerous. Kite steps with slippery material. Reminders, max step height 100 to 150 millimeters. Minimum step length 300 millimeters. Minimum step width 1,500 millimeters. Max flight 12 steps. Landing 1.5 meters after 12 steps. Step style closed. Top handrail should be 900 millimeters from the middle of the step. Lower handrail, 600 millimeters. Extensions at both ends, 300 millimeters from the bottom and top. Tactile tiles, 300 millimeters at both ends. Step edge, 30% contrast. Material, non-slip surface. Nosing, nosing, none. The riser should be flat edged. These features are described in the National Building Code and are required as per the building bylaws. Consequences of non-compliance 
any person contributing to the non-compliance is liable to prosecution and punishment as per the RPWA rules 2017.